Welcome, Yolanda, to the May monthly update of, of what's going on in the world and in our business and for, for our clients. Uh, at the time of recording, we're, we're going through an incredibly rocky time in world markets. Uh, and, and I think we've got so much that we're concerned about as investors. You know, there's, there's a lot going on with China locking down again, uh, global markets, uh, um, you know, responding very badly to that. Lots of concerns about inflation. Uh, around the world, maybe not so much in South Africa, but still a concern here. Um, and a lot of this is buffeting us as, as South African investors, but also buffeting our clients' investments, whether it be South African investments or overseas investments. It's kind of a, a horrible time and a, a really uncertain time. Indeed, Warren, it is, it's uncomfortable and definitely uncertain. And I think in investments, there's never a certain time, but currently it feels like there's so much negativity around. Um, but there was a very nice, um, well-known financial planner in, in the US called Carl Richards, and he does a lot of financial education. And he wrote a very interesting article right on this subject. And he says that certainty button, you can just never find. And isn't it just the truth? <laughs> so he says there's no spreadsheet that will ever help you and get you to where you want to be and the more money you have it's not necessary that it's going to make you feel more comfortable and that you have sufficient. Sometimes people with more money feel more uncertain because they just don't know what to do with it. So the best things that you can do is to control what you can control. Okay. Look at what that is. You know, we can help you with a strategy. Make sure your asset allocation is correct. Take money offshore if you have to take money offshore, and that is what you need to do at the right level of the ramp. Don't be panicky when the ramp blows out. Um, have a conversation with your financial planner when that happens and you feel panicky. Um, control your expenses. That's something you can do. If you're still saving, keep on saving. Um, make sure you're saving enough or, or even more if you can. But those are the things that you can control. Make a list of them, go read through them, tick them off with a big black mark, the ones that you've done well. If you haven't done it um, or haven't done one of them, then go again, read your list, do it again. And then let go of the rest. And Carl Richards, he repeats that like five times. Let go of the rest, let go of the rest. <laughs> and that's the one thing we don't want to do, right? Um, so the, uh, control the things you can control and those that you can't just know that there will be always be volatility and uncertainty. I think it's a key point. I mean, uh, you know, living through the last sort of two decades of investment markets, what one thing that's become clear to me is these big periods of major uncertainty have been increasing in frequency. So it, it, we should be getting, uh, it would be human nature uh, not to adapt to it, but, but as investors, we need to become more comfortable that, uh, that, that these major periods of volatility are not going to go away. Uh, the reasons why we get volatility won't, uh, won't be the same. So, so very, it's China now. Very often it's a surprising event. Yeah. It's, it's not the things that you expect. Yeah. So, um, so I think I agree with you. I mean, I think uh, Carl's a smart guy, uh, and and certainly we can't provide a certainty button to anybody. It would be lovely to have it, uh, but, but you know, talking about the things we can control, you're right. You know, if you if you know that your your let's say your allocation to shares is sufficient to give you capital growth over the long periods of time, what you have to know always it's the, I think the only promise we ever make investors is we promise to lose you money from time to time, um, and this is one of those times. And, and it's not that we're we're kind of blasé about it or or, or not uh, uh, stressed ourselves because uh, I mean this is these are stressful times these are stressful events, but what we do know is we've done we've done the work upfront. Uh, to build the right investment strategy. We've done the work in terms of choosing investments that can deal with volatility. It doesn't mean that they go, they don't go down. Um, there, hasn't, uh, there hasn't ever been an investment yet that can beat inflation that doesn't go down. They, they have to go down. But we think uh, that, that the investments we select don't, don't go down and stay down permanently. They do bounce eventually and, and hopefully they bounce uh, faster than markets will uh, or at least as fast as markets will. And, and I think that that's the key in this is a lot of the time, from our point of view, we start having conversations with investors. As you say, you're encouraging them to call us, which is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they, they'll ask us, I know I can hear these questions on my head saying, what are you doing now? And, and the answer is now we're not doing anything because we've done a lot of the work up front.
Uh, and, and so now we've built uh, your strategy to deal with this time. And so now actually the most valuable thing we can often do for somebody is to do nothing. Uh, and and I think that's a hard a key. thing to do, right? If you want certainty, you want to do something. You want to change an investment or change asset allocation. Lots of people want to go to money markets, um, to, to cash, and, and possibly the worst time to do that. Yeah. I think cash is a, it, is a, it does provide certainty. What it, what it gives you is a certainty that you will not beat inflation. So, so, so you can, we should have actually said that, you can at the start, you can have certainty. It comes at a permanent financial cost. Yes. Uh, and, and that's a terrible, uh, a terrible outcome for, for people. Um, and I think also some of the investments that we, that we select for investors, we purposely choose things that look totally different to the stock market. We also choose investments that purposely sometimes carry more risk than, than, than the stock market because we believe that those are investments that will generate good capital growth. So when they're not doing well, understand that, that we've bought them for a reason. We are looking at them and making sure that uh, they are still appropriate for you and for all of our clients. Uh, and, and if they're not doing well, understand we are worrying about it uh, and that's what you're paying us for. Uh, and if we're still buying them now, we, uh, you know, I've, I've had a few of those phone calls for people saying, you know, this investment is down quite significantly. Why are you still buying it? Uh, and my answer is we're buying it because it's at a heck of a discount now. That's exactly the time we should be buying it, not when it's going up, because buying things where, when they're going up, it's an easy, uh, emotionally an easy thing to do, but, but probably not the best idea. Yes, exactly. And the problem is when changing funds uh, regularly, um, there, there are cost implications. And that's the one thing that people never take into account when, when making changes. And Warren, I know that for the last um, week or so, you've spent eight hours on one fund, just investigating one fund. And, and I think that's what people don't often see and clients don't often see. But sometimes when we say do nothing, there is a really big reason for that. And, and the research has been done. Yeah, and I think uh, you, you know, as an in, uh, as an investment house, because we, we have a financial planning uh, hat, uh, and that's what we wear for all of our clients. But but for some of our clients, we are also an investment house, and, and maybe the comfort that we should give p our, our clients in that situation is, uh, w when something has gone down, uh, if it's gone down within the tolerances that we've decided, we've said we've. We bought this investment. We expect that in really bad market conditions, it could go down 10 or 15 or 20 percent. If it goes down more than that, uh, the, the first thing we do is we don't panic. Uh, we, 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 we're not happy, but, but what we do is we go back and we revisit our investment thesis. Why did we buy this? Uh, do those reasons still exist? Uh, has something changed in this investment that, that is now causing us to review or is it just the market? Is it just like the tide? The tide's gone out, investment's gone down, when the tide comes back the investment goes up. If that's the short answer that we come to after a lot of research, we stay the course. If something has fundamentally changed, we will be the first people to say uh, we've made a mistake or something's happened into this investment or in the investment markets uh, that will cause this investment not to recover and we will sell it. So, so I think that that's the comfort we need to give people as well, is that um, it takes a lot of work to do nothing. Yes. Uh, and that's what we're doing now, is we're, we're doing a heck of a lot of work uh, making sure that if we're making no changes, there, there, there is good reason for, for that. Yeah, exactly. So, so I'd like to change, uh, change the story quite significantly now. Uh, we, we've had some quite interesting moves in the budget. I know we've spoken about it in, in, in previous uh, monthly updates, but, but uh, um, I think now we're starting to see how fund managers are reacting to, to these changes. And the one I really specifically want to talk about is the, the increase of uh, offshore allocation within retirement funds. Uh, and I'm interested to hear your thoughts on that. Mm. So what happened is that the allocation has been increased from 30% offshore to 45%. Now a lot of fund managers that we've spoken to are slowly but surely moving to the 45%. Not all, but most of the fund managers that we do use. We think it is the right move. Um, the research papers that we've seen and, and looked at shows that that 50% offshore, 50% local is a good ratio to have for long-term investments and performance but it does increase the volatility of a fund in the short short term okay so remember now there's a few factors that you need to take into account there's the local markets and and its volatility there's the offshore markets 
their volatility and its different markets, um, and then the RAND and its um, uh, price against the developed market currency. So there is, is a whole lot of factors. And if the RAND is very strong, it might now have a little bit of a detrimental impact on the value of your fund. And I think for, especially for clients that are withdrawing from capital, it's not to get panicky. In dollars, your, your capital might be up, but in RAND terms, it might be down. Okay. Um, but still, it's, it's best just to carry on with a strategy that you have and just um, go through those periods of volatility. Um, do not make changes when the RAND is strong or the RAND goes up again. We've seen now in the last week or you know the week before where the RAND has depreciated quite a bit against the dollar in a very short period of time. So again, then those funds looks better suddenly. So it is again the uncertainty thing, the volatility that comes through. It is control what you can control and um, let the rest be if it's structured correctly. <laughs> So, so I think that that's a key message is that uh, th this move to increase the offshore allocation uh, intuitively and I guess almost emotionally uh, a, a lot of our retired clients and those that are putting money into their retirement funds will feel comfortable because they're getting exposure to bigger markets, the, the, the political risk of South Africa is reducing, the economic risk of a, of a slow economy is reducing. Those are good factors. However, we need to know the price for that is your investments are going to be going up and down in, in, in value a lot more than they've done in the past. Uh, and, and as you say, there's, there's almost a whole new factor. You know, when, when offshore funds were 30% of your money, uh, the, the, the RAND volatility was, was not as big a factor as it is now. So when half your money uh, is, is fully affected by the RAND, and, and then you take into account the RAND head shares of the JSE as well, uh, the, 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 the RAND becomes a much bigger factor in, in, in moving your investments up or down. So, so I would say as a house, as Galileo, what we're saying is, we like the move, we like the restructure, we, we're 100% in favor of it. What we would ask you is when you're seeing your statements, don't look at just a, a one month performance because that, that one month performance might be a lot more rocky than you used to. Uh, what you will need to do is look at it over a three or six or nine month period and get an idea of what that overall pattern is. And th that's a much better indicator because monthly moves now are gonna be noisy uh, and, and not, uh, uh, not giving you a clear path of, of what's going on. And I think just the one thing to note is that it won't happen all in one go. It is a slow process. The fund managers are taking their time with this. So they're looking for a stronger RAND to go out. And um, most of them said it's six months to 18 months. So it's not an immediate thing either. So I think we're probably running out of time then. I think uh, maybe just to summarize, uh, you know, my take from this is that, uh, and it was something I hadn't really uh, crystallized in my head until you brought this up, is that, that retirement funds are going to become a lot more rocky for, for, for investors in, the short, in short periods of time. Yeah. Uh, especially when you're drawing your, an, an income from your investments, it's going gonna, it's gonna to seem a bit more uncomfortable, but, but it, is a, it is a good strategy. Uh, and unfortunately, if you want certainty and you want absolute certainty on your investments, that, then uh, the only way you can do that is at a huge cost to your investment growth, which is go to cash, don't beat inflation. Uh, and, and when tax gets taken into account, you're really going to be going backwards. And I'm not saying it in a flippant way, it's just that we, we, it isn't possible to beat inflation and have complete certainty. So, so as you correctly point out, uh, exert control over the things you can as, a, as an investor. We will exert control over the things we can as your advisors and possibly as your investment managers. And then we need to just live with the, the volatility and the tide of markets because that is the reality. Is we, are, we are part of the global markets and we are going to deal with this stuff uh, on a sustained basis for many years to come. Yeah, exactly. That's indeed that. Thank you very much, Warren.